Good evening everyone. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. It's only me, Connor 500, on Sunday night for the April statistics meeting. We're going to have a roundup of how it went on the channel for the month of April. Not very well, if we're honest with ourselves. Not very well at all. I mean, it wasn't a disaster. It wasn't March. It wasn't like March. But it wasn't amazing either. I hope you've all had a lovely weekend, whatever you've been doing, however your bets have gone. Today's bets on the channel, yeah, pretty fantastic. More than happy with it. But yesterday was a bit of a disaster. So it's up and down, really. That's why keeping your statistics is so important. Because after you've had so many ups and downs, it's easy not to know where you are. So it's worth keeping track of your statistics. I was going to use this video to go through a few extra additional subjects, but I'm going to hold off on them until the half-time team talk. Going to hold off on them. We're just going to go through the statistics. We're going to go through a couple of important points as well. We'll get the statistics out first. Guys, if, any, if, if there's any viewer that keeps track of their own statistics, I would love for you to let me know in the comments how it's gone, what your return on investment is. I would love to know whether it's gone pretty well or whether it's gone terrible. You can air it all here. All feedback is welcome. It really is. Because my ones are going to be different to everyone else's. I hope that yours are better than mine because I'm held to quite some quite strict channel rules. But you're not. So if you're using a major bookmaker, I'm hoping that your statistics can fly off quite a, a bit ahead of mine. But here's what I've got for the channel. But as always, keep track of your own ones. Keep track of your own statistics. I've got it April. April final statistics. I've got it as a minus 3.5% ROI. An ROI of minus 3.5%. Because I've got it as a total stake of 16,550. A total return of 15,970, which is a total loss of 580. I'm going to put this in the description box. Just So if you press that description box, you should, should see this. So yeah, I've got it as minus 3.5% for the channel for April. But I'll be honest, guys. I'll be sub no one will have made a huge profit this month. No one. There'll be, I, I don't imagine there's going to be any viewers hitting plus 15, 20% this month. I don't. But I do think most punters who have used major bookmakers or even average bookmakers for my bets this month, I think they'll be showing a slight profit. I really do. I think it would be hard to lose heavily this month if you're betting consistently on, on my channel bets. Unless BetVictor or something like that. I think it would have been hard to lose much. I think my minus 3.5% is going to be one of the worst. But I, I don't know. I mean, there, there's going to be some punters out there who've had minus 10% this month and stuff like that. I'm not telling you it's, you know, it, always keep track of your own statistics. So, yeah, officially for the channel, I've got it for April, minus 3.5%. As a yearly total... So let's just do an add up of the yearly total so far. 2022 Connor 500 statistics. I've got it as a total stake of 63,770, a total return of 68,400, and that's a total profit of 4,630, which is an ROI of plus 7%, slightly above it. So we're on plus 7% for the year. It's getting tight because I've got that challenge. If I make less than 5% for the year, I'm going to be paying £5,000 out in a competition. So we're, we're, we're quite tight for it, but I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not too concerned just yet. So for the year, I've got it as we're up 7% for the year. We have got a couple of viewers who very kindly earlier today posted their statistics in the channel. We have got Alan Sharp, um, his April ROI was plus 8%, so an April ROI of plus 8%, um, that does not include yesterday though, that doesn't include 
our bad hit in the Grand National. And that sort of makes sense to me. I can imagine Alan's using one of the major bookmakers. There's a couple of nice concessions in there or bonuses, you know what I mean? And he, So plus 8%, I think, is where a lot of the, the grinders are this month, using the major bookmakers. And Alan has also kindly told us his year ROI, so his ROI on the year, including the golf, is 16%, which is pretty solid. I mean, it's nothing to write home about because it's exactly where we expect it to be. But I'm not, you know, I'm not too unhappy to hear it. So Alan Sharp's year ROI at the minute is plus 16%. We also got kindly got a set of April statistics from Kev. And Kev is also up 8% for April, which I think sounds about right. I think about 8% is, well, obviously it's right for this particular view. Obviously, I'm not saying that. But I mean, sounds about right for the bulk. Of, of, of grinders that are using major bookmakers, about 8% this month. Like I said, it, it wasn't a good month, but it's not a March. I mean, March was horrific. There was a lot of grinders that didn't even make it out of March alive. It was, so at least that didn't happen again. And I, I'm not saying that we should be grateful for anything but a disaster, but you know, it could have been worse, it could have been worse. That's the statistics. I'm going to go through a few quick things. It's not going to be a long video. The spreadsheet. Now I've moved in. Now I've settled in. I'm going to be getting this spreadsheet malarkey sorted. Getting a public spreadsheet where you get one of them links and everyone can see it. I'm going to be having a good look into that. See what I can do about that. And I'll update everyone about that at the half-time team talk for May. And then hopefully we can have it sorted at the very latest going into June. It's not the biggest problem. It's not. Because we've got, our, we, the thing is, as long as we've got our ROI and we've got the core important statistics down, it, frankly, that's, that's it. The ROI is the most important thing. But it would be nice to have a fun set, not a fun set, sorry, but a clear set of on an Excel or something like that. So I'm going to be looking a lot into that over the next couple of weeks. Um, what else? Okay, the biggest separation since the church and state the biggest separation what's happening the separation of horses and golf i am no longer keeping the statistics for the horses and the golf together they're now completely completely separate and they're not going to be included in each other's videos or anything like that they will be included together on the about page the about page at the front of the channel but on the day-to-day -day statistics the golf is not going to come in influence the horses. The horses aren't going to influence the golf. They're going to be nothing to do with each other. So that's the separation of horses and golf. I uh, just wanted to say that. Formula One. There's going to be the occasional Formula One bet coming out on Sunday. I was silly not to do it before. We're, going to, we're just going to get the occasional Formula One bet out on a Sunday. It's not going to be staked. It's not going to be anything to do with the horses. It will be on the horse video because I don't, ju I can't justify a Formula One video all to itself. But there will be the very occasional non-staked Formula One bet on the channel because it's an absolutely nice bit of value. And I was a bit hesitant the whole channel for doing it. But if I'm putting golf out, Formula One, yeah, it's not going to be all the time. There's going to be the occasional Formula One bet on the channel. Um, so if you like that, I'd love to hear any feedback. If you hate that, I'd love to hear the feedback too. Right. I'm looking at my list here. I just wrote down a couple of things to say. Well, right, 500 on Sunday. I am going to be doing that, 500 on Sunday. Hopefully next Sunday is the first one. Just a round-up of the week. Then I can go through each day a little bit, not massively, but we do 500 on Sunday, 15, 20 minute video. I'll go through the week, go through the results. Maybe a couple of topics have come up. I think that's good in addition to the end of the month. Maybe it won't be every Sunday. It might work out in ending up every other Sunday. But there will be a Connor 500 on Sunday. Right. 
I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say for this video. I'm going to leave it at that because I'm going to because I've got a few of them. Like I've, put, I've wrote down my betting plan. I'm going to talk about that on the on the next one because I was going to going to go right into that. We go a bit in depth about my actual, but I'm just going to leave that for this video and I'll go through that with you on the halftime team or I'll go through it with you on 500 on Sunday. On Sunday, you never know. Right. One apology I have to make before I like, before I go and leave this video. I did not give nearly enough attention as that Punches Down Festival deserved. I really didn't. It's just because I was moving and a lot of things like that. I know that's not an excuse, but it's just the way it went. And I just sort of took each day as it come. During that period of the last couple of weeks, I just took each day as it come. Make sure you got each next day catered for and that's it rather than... So that's... Do you know what I mean? That was pretty much what the logic there was with that. Why did I go for the 2,000 guineas for the tournament? I don't think it was too... Because uh, the thing is, I don't want to force the tournament races to be on the exact same type of handicap each time. I would rather play it wherever the next big race is, is whatever the next race for the... Do you know what I mean? I'd, I'd, and then it's a bit... I'd like, I, I like the fact that there was a bit of strategy in there that some people would have thought, right, the amount of people have picked this, so this means that this is slightly better to pick, because some people would have thought that, because there would be some viewers that just pick their fancy, but there'll be other viewers who start... And I like the fact that it was just, I could say, all oh, right, the next big race to do, we'll do the 2,000 guineas, irrelevant of the, of the market, rather than me deliberately choosing the same types of handicaps. Do you know what I mean? That was the logic, but the bad part of that logic was I could have really done something in the Punches Down Festival. I really could have done. So it just goes back to me not giving the Punches Down Festival as much attention as it deserves. But because I knew I was moving on the Tuesday, Wednesday, I thought to myself, I'll write that week off. I'll just do the day to day as it comes for the channel. And that's the logic anyway. I probably haven't explained that amazingly. I'm going to leave it at that. I've said what I've got to say. I've said spreadsheet. I've said about Formula One. I've said about the separation of golf and horses. I've said about 500 on Sunday. I've apologised about the Punches Down Festival. And I, I think that's all I've got to say. I hope you'll have a lovely evening. I'm glad it went well today. Hopefully we can turn May around. I don't want to be paying that five grand out at the end of the year. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hope you'll have a lovely, lovely evening. I wanted to make this video longer because I was going to talk right about my betting plans and the things like that. Because there's been a couple of updates. I'll tell you. I'll tell. No, no, I'm going to. No, I won't. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off. Right. I hope you have a lovely evening. Take care of yourself. Tomorrow's racing looks all right. It looks a decent day tomorrow. I've just started having my first few drafts into it, but it's looking a good day. Take care of yourself, everyone. I've just had a lovely dinner before I did this video. I made jerk chicken. It, it comes already as jerk chicken. I've fried all that all up. I've, I've put some rice in, in, the, in the bag in the pan. I've done that for 15 minutes. So I've, so I've got the jerk chicken going. I've got the rice in the bag going. Then I've added a load of Thai stir fry. I know it don't officially go with it. Into the jerk chicken. And I've just served it up. Absolutely beautiful. It's lovely. But anyway, I hope you all have a lovely evening. Take care of yourself. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, cheers.